The Philadelphia Eagles just got some great news ahead of their Week 3 matchup versus the Bucks that makes their chances of coming away with the victory even higher. And as we get closer to this Monday night matchup, more news continues to come out for the Eagles, including an update on what the Birds may do at the slot cornerback position, as well as what role we should expect from DeAndre Swift and the other Eagles running backs in this game. Plus, is this Eagle ready to explode after a slow start to the year, and could the Eagles passing offense as a whole get on track versus the Bucks? Well, Jalen Hurts certainly hopes they can, as this game might be a little bit more personal for him than most, and he's going to be looking for revenge on this Bucks defense because of what happened just a few short seasons ago. So we're going to talk about all that in this video today, so let's not waste any time and get straight into it. So the Eagles will face the Bucks in just two short days, and what seemingly so far could be the biggest test of their season. I mean, the Bucks have been playing well. Baker Mayfield has been surprisingly good to many people, and of course, continuing with their offense, the wide receiver duo of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin has been amazing as usual, and that offensive trio is surely going to make it hard on the Eagles' pass defense, which should look a lot different this week than it did last week. Plus, the Bucks have also been really good defensively through two games, as they held each of their first two opponents to 17 points, they've gotten to the quarterback, they've gotten stops, and they've also created turnovers. So this will definitely be a bit of an early season test for this Eagles offense, which has kind of struggled to begin the year. And so far, just in general in the Jalen Hurts era, him and the Eagles offense have struggled against this Buccaneers defense. Now, it's a very small sample size to look at, as the Eagles and Bucks have played just twice with Jalen Hurts as the starting quarterback, with both coming in the 2021 season, one being a playoff game. But Hurts just did not play well enough when facing the Bucks defense. In his first matchup with them, Hurts threw for just 115 yards with one touchdown and an interception and a passer rating of just 55.8, along with two rushing touchdowns to be fair, but the Eagles ended up losing that game 28-22 at home. And then the next time Hurts faced the Bucks was in his playoff debut, where he had a disappointing performance, putting up 258 yards, one touchdown, and two picks, along with a passer rating of 60. And then you also have that clip of the Bucks coach on the sideline saying this about Hurts. To be honest with you, it's been a mismatch so far. This guy can't read. That's Mike. Keep moving around. He can't read now. He's going to give us a couple. And then the Eagles obviously ended up losing that game 31-15 to in a game that wasn't even that close. And I do remember coming out of that game and a lot of people coming out of that game with questions wondering if Hurts actually had the capability to be that guy for the Eagles at quarterback that could lead them on a deep playoff run. I mean, he just looked so bad during that game and that whole season the Eagles were this dominant running team, but the Bucks took that away and forced Hurts to beat them with his arm and he just couldn't. So there were a lot of doubters after that game, including myself, I'll admit. But now, obviously, fast forward a couple seasons, and Hurts is at a completely different spot. I mean, he's proven to be the guy here in Philly. He's proven to be a franchise quarterback that can lead a team deep into the playoffs and to the Super Bowl, and he's far different and improved from what he was as a player the last time he played the Bucs. So now, he's going to be looking for a bit of revenge in this game. I mean, obviously, it's going to be a lot different, as the Bucs don't have Tom Brady at QB anymore, and the coach is different as well. But still, Hurts has an opportunity to come out here and put all his struggles versus the Bucs defense to bed. And just a few days ago, he was asked if he feels any extra motivation for this game because of that mic'd up clip and the struggles he's had against this team in the past and this is what he said yeah i think there's a, a, a whole bunch of things I, I think i'm um i'm wired to uh, you know wired to to give my best and to play to my standard um but a little extra inspiration never hurts so it sounds like Jalen's taking this game personally, and he's ready to come out here and have a revenge game. However, that doesn't mean he's lost sight of what really matters, because at the end of the day, the most important thing is not Jalen coming out here and throwing for 300 yards and three touchdowns, or killing the Bucks through the air. The most important thing is winning. And look, we know Hurts in the offense, specifically the passing game, just has not been as good as it needs to be to start the year, but at the end of the day, again, that's not the most important thing, and Jalen Hurts made sure to emphasize that in this clip. What I'm telling, what I'm telling you is, it's not about me, it's about us and so if if um if, if they are doing something there for me we got 250 yards rushing to you know to do that and so there are multiple ways to win and um the, the, the thing that i want to make clear is when they're winning not become the main thing i always say keep the main thing the main thing where you know winning is the only thing that truly matters and so obviously you have important things right you have priorities and I think you have 1A and 1B. 1A is winning. 1B is playing to the standard. Now you can win, but not play to the standard and you're still unfulfilled. You can play to the standard and not win and you're still unfulfilled. So, so what matters? 
So I really think Hurts put it perfectly here. Sure, the Eagles aren't satisfied with how they've been playing, but at least they're winning in spite of it. And now their job's going to be to go and fix the problems that they're having so they can play up to that standard that Hurts was speaking of and also win at the same time, which of course is the ideal scenario. And if I got faith in anyone to do that, it's Jalen Hurts. And heading into this matchup, Hurts is going to be taking on another Oklahoma Sooner at QB in Baker Mayfield, and Mayfield recently had some really nice praise for Hurts, as he said, quote, he's a tremendous leader. I think you guys have seen his play speaks for itself, but his work ethic is extremely important to him, and you can see that resonate with the whole team. Every team he's been on, he's never changed. That's the special thing about him. So it's really cool to hear Baker say that about Jalen, and now he's going to look to come out again and get some revenge on the Buccaneers with a big game, but much more importantly, a win. So give me your thoughts down in the comments comments below, what kind of numbers will Hurts put up on Monday night? And also, what kind of numbers will DeAndre Swift put up now that we pretty much know that the Eagles are going to roll with him as RB1 heading into Monday night after Nick Sirianni said this? But we're going to ride the hot hand. Um, do I think it's sustainable? I mean, I, shoot, I think he's, you know, his body's ready to go and, uh, you know, I don't ever want to put an expectation on anybody of, you know, we'll, we'll, if he's got the hot hand on, on uh, Monday night, we'll keep ro rolling with him. It's hard not to you know, run a ball like that and give it to him 35 times. So, you know, it's hard not to do that. Now, I definitely like this because DeAndre Swift has earned it, to be honest. I mean, he played extremely well on Thursday, as we all know, having a career night and winning NFC Offensive Player of the Week. And there's no reason to think he can't continue to be effective. So the Eagles are seemingly going to ride the hot hand in Swift until it's not working as well or when someone else catches fire. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, the Eagles will definitely also mix in some other guys with a running back spot along with Swift, one of those guys being Kenny Gainwell, as after missing last week's game versus the Vikings, he's going to be ready to go on Monday night, as he's been back at practice this week and he's been a full participant, and this is just a small part of the overall great injury news that the Eagles have gotten this week leading into the game. As the Saturday injury report pretty much revealed that the entire Eagles team is going to be healthy heading into their game versus the Buccaneers, just like Kenneth Gainwell, Reed Blankenship, and James Bradbury will be back after dealing with injuries and missing last game, both of them were a full go in practice on Saturday along with Fletcher Cox, who's dealing with a rib injury, Zach Cunningham, Jordan Davis, Terrell Edmonds, Devontae Smith, Jack Stoll, and Josh Sweat. All of those guys were full participants in Saturday's practice after being limited at various points during the week for different reasons. And the only two guys that are set to miss Monday's game versus the Buccaneers are one, Boston Scott, who's still in concussion protocol after suffering that versus the Vikings on Thursday, and then also Quez Watkins, who picked up a hamstring injury versus the Vikings. He's pretty much been out of practice all week, and that continued on Saturday, so he's going to miss the game versus the Buccaneers. And with him out, the Eagles are going to be relying a lot more heavily on wide receiver for Alameda Zacchaeus to step up. And Nick Sirianni spoke to that in his press conference today. You know, obviously, Quez brings a, a, a type of speed that's, you know, not a lot of people have. Um, and I like what, you know, OZ brings to our offense. He brings he brings a toughness, you know, uh, you know, um, we trust him. He's just he's savvy route runner. He's got great uh, football instincts. And so, you know, if, it, if it's his turn to, to play this week, you know, we, I've got a lot of faith in him uh, that he'll do a really good job. I mean, Oz has pretty much done nothing in his first two games here, but now that he should see an increased role, we'll see if he's able to have an impact. Now, there are a couple other guys like Oz who should see an increased role this week and also moving forward throughout the rest of the season, as the Eagles and Sean Desai have now at this point hinted at what their plan is at slot cornerback with Avante Maddox likely out for the season. I mean, a lot of people thought maybe James Bradbury would move inside for the rest of the season and play the slot, but it doesn't really sound like that's the Eagles' plan based on what Sean Desai said here. Sean, what did you see in Bradbury when he was working in the slot there in the summer and what about his skill set, you know, kind of fits that role for him? Yeah, uh, I thought it was great. I mean, the one thing you talk about James and really a lot of our, uh, especially our older guys that have played a lot of football, uh, is they're so smart. They're so football savvy and football smart that some of those transitions for him as he was, as we were doing some of that stuff with him, uh, became a little bit simpler for him because he understands the game and understands what we're trying to get done with some of these coverages and techniques. So I, I was really impressed with how he was uh, taking on to that uh, role uh, and not really sacrificing his corner role because that's his role. You know what I mean? Like he's our, he's our corner. So essentially Desai reiterated that Bradbury's primary role on this team is to be one of the outside cornerbacks while he also explained how he liked what he saw from Bradbury in the slot in training camp. So again, based off these comments, it sounds like Bradbury will primarily remain on the outside and then depending on matchups, he may move into the slot. I mean, specifically this week, we know that Mike Evans and Chris Godwin both have the capability to come in and play that slot receiver position effectively so maybe you'll see Bradbury follow those guys into the slot when they inevitably line up there on Monday and then depending on where Bradbury
very is the Eagles will be relying on a couple other guys to step up. One being Mario Goodrich, who stepped in for Maddox last week and didn't have a great game, but to be fair, it was a really tough spot to just get thrown in there and go up against Justin Jefferson, and he did get better as the game went on. And then also, Josh Job is going to be a lot more heavily relied upon, as when James Bradbury moves into the slot, Job is going to be the one that comes in and plays on the outside. So hopefully those two guys are able to step up and have success. I don't expect them to be perfect. I expect them to make mistakes, assuming they do step in and play these bigger roles for the team, but hopefully they're able to be serviceable. Now, the last thing I do want to talk about is Hassan Reddick, because like I mentioned in my last video, he has had a rather slow start to the year in terms of sacking the quarterback, and many people are wondering what's going on with him. I mean, is it the thumb injury that's really bothering him that much, or does he just need a little bit of time to get going? Well, Nick Sirianni was asked about Reddick and whether the cast on his thumb has been affecting him at all, and this is what he said. Has Reddick been affected by the uh, having to wear the cast? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, you know, you'll you'll have to ask. I think that's something you'll have to ask him. Um, you know, but he still changes the game. Whether whether Hassan is and, and I've and I've I've learned this a long time ago that these things come in waves. You know, whether he's he's been getting pressures. I know that um, Hassan has been getting pressures and you know, and has been affecting the game just being out there. Um, so you'll have to ask him as far as, you know, I kind of said, I don't think so, but like, you know what, that's a good question for him. Um, and I know he's affecting the game and, and we're playing, you know, and he's, he's contributed to, you know, these wins that we've had. So there you go, Sirianni believes that he's still been able to affect the game positively, and it also seems like Sirianni has confidence that Reddick's turn will come. I mean, like he said, sacks come in waves sometimes, and with Reddick going without one in either of the first two games, he could be on the verge of breaking through. I mean, plus, like I mentioned in my last video, Sean Desai is prepared to get creative in terms of how they use Reddick to help him have more success, so it really does sound like it's only a matter of time before Hassan Reddick is sacking the QB frequently, just like he did last year, and we'll see if that starts on Monday night. I mean, I personally think think that Reddick's going to get his first sack of the year on Baker Mayfield in this game, but what do you guys think? What kind of performance are you expecting from Reddick in this game? And also, just in general, leave a comment down below regarding anything that I talked about in this video, and if you did enjoy it, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any other videos coming like it in the future. Also, drop a like to show some support, and also watch this video going over some other Eagles news from earlier in the week. Now, with all that being said, that's pretty much all I got for this one, guys, so thank y'all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.